So it doesn't matter where you're at financially, he'll take you from zero to rich. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrott. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace. Say, I know the grace. I know the, grace. the Bible says you already know this, but I'm going to remind you of it. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, say rich, rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. The Bible here is calling that a grace, a grace that you should know. And this grace is him becoming poor so that you could become rich. Now we know this grace on other levels generally because this is not often taught in most churches is it you know the grace of the Lord Jesus that he bore your sins he was made sin so that you would be made righteous and everybody go yes that's the grace of God mm -hmm. we also know at least in some circles that he bore your sicknesses and carried your diseases so that you could be what made healthy and healed and I would say youth renewal goes in that category as well because mm -hmm. often you don't really need healing you just need your youth renewed in that specific area mm -hmm. but the Bible's talking about here just like Jesus bore your sins Jesus bore your sicknesses by grace he bore your poverty that you could what be made rich doesn't matter what kind of sin you're in you can still have the grace of the Lord Jesus and be made righteous is this true mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter what sickness you have the grace of the Lord Jesus will heal you and make you whole so it doesn't matter where you're at financially on the scale God will make you rich He'll take you from zero to more than more than enough. That's called abundance. He'll take you from zero to rich. This is built into the gospel. Mm -hmm. How often do you hear this in most churches? Almost never. Yet there it is. It's built into the gospel. When does this happen? When you get to heaven. Obviously, you get healed when you get to heaven. No, you died. Mm -hmm. You didn't get healed and went to heaven. Are you here? Mm -hmm. You still got to go to heaven it's still a win-win situation when does this grace take you from poverty to making you rich say in this life, in this life. you know this right mm -hmm. it says you know this you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might be made rich rich Bible says you know this mm -hmm. I dare say you could go up to most Christians and they don't know this this is not part of their knowledge of the gospel they would say oh you're one of those prosperity preaching people oh you believe God wants you to prosper I believe the word and I don't believe you you want to live off in poverty then you are not partaking of this grace there's a grace to be made rich are you here yeah then we go on to try to explain to people that Jesus actually came here not just for this but so that, the, so that you could know the promise mm -hmm. the promise being the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. he won't come unless I leave so when Jesus fulfilled all that he had to fulfill that we're supposed to know and the Holy Ghost would come. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, and then let's look at verse 4. 
and being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which you have heard of me so this isn't the first time he mentioned the Holy Ghost in fact he'd been mentioning the Holy Ghost was gonna come time after time after time after time after time mm -hmm. verse 5 for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence mm -hmm. verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up who was taken up Jesus. he Jesus was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight was he with them anymore they saw him go up physically into a cloud and was removed from them verse 10 and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel it stood by them what does that mean they were, they were right next to him mm -hmm. who was next to them right now the two men mm -hmm. the two angels and who wasn't next to them Jesus according to the way we read English Jesus was taken away and two men were with them yes. could the disciples say we now have two angels with us look at them they're right there mm -hmm. could they say we have Jesus with us no no Jesus had just left mm -hmm. you look at me like I'm crazy two men stood by them in white apparel verse 11 which also said you men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven is that true yeah so Jesus went up and the angel said what are you looking for this same Jesus say this same Jesus. this same Jesus this same Jesus that was taken up shall come back in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven mm -hmm. is that difficult to understand mm -hmm. has that happened yeah. so where is this same Jesus this Bible Jesus mm -hmm. he is at the right hand of the Father are you still here yes Acts chapter 2 verse 32 this Jesus hath God raised up whereof we all are witnesses they were not all witnesses of him rolling the stone away when he was raised from the dead they were all witnesses of this Jesus raising up from the earth into heaven verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of God exalted being what does that mean presently mm -hmm. so here's the disciples saying that Jesus is presently being at the right hand of God exalted mm -hmm. and according to what we've said before he has not returned yet so where is Jesus being right now who do we walk with therefore in the earth Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you into the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and we know he's a person you will receive the person of the Holy Ghost for verse 39 for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call so the promise comes to you the person of the Holy Ghost comes to you he is the one that you get to walk with in the earth get that straight Jesus was exalted and seated at the right hand of the Father being there and is still being there they sent the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost comes to us and we walk with him is this so difficult where is Jesus now in heaven at the right hand of the Father mm -hmm. who do we walk with in the earth Holy the Holy Ghost you know people don't like that people write me long nasty letters they don't agree with what the word says then second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 
now the Lord is that spirit when is now now is now this dispensation now the Lord is that spirit see because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord there is Liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit Lord the Spirit who is Lord the Holy Ghost he is God in the earth today and we walk with him in the earth now I want to take you on to the great things of God but in order to go to the great things you have to have some things settled you must get the basics first what I've been saying so far have all been very 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 basic things that most people don't have a grasp on yet a lot of people hearing it like I've never heard that before how how have you never heard it before how have you never heard about the grace that makes you rich how have you never heard that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and sent another one to be with you how have you never heard this see the problem is you've you've lumped all of these things together into some big religious basket and shook it up and dumped it out but I'm going on mm -hmm. I'm going from one glory to another glory and here the scripture says we go with the Spirit Lord from one glory to the next you have to have it straight get it straight can you see that is it possible to go from glory to glory without having that straight no so I want to take you on to the great things of God but you must get the basics first the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we walk with him by saying words these are basic things mm -hmm. this is our present reality you know what that says to me the people that don't believe this have not come this far are living in some other form of reality some kind of deception that keeps them from going on with the Spirit Lord so we walk with God the Holy Ghost in the earth by saying words let's see if I can prove it to you this is how God does things you know that right mm -hmm. in the beginning God said things and that's how everything came into being including you mm -hmm. so everything was made out of the words of God spoken you are made out of the words of God spoken you want to walk with God you're gonna to have to learn how he does things and get in agreement mm -hmm. when you do he'll take you on to greater and greater things first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God or the Spirit God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God how are we going to know the things that are freely given to us of God mm -hmm. it's by knowing the Spirit God the Holy Ghost are you here mm -hmm. verse 13 which things also we speak so we can know the things that are freely given to us of God by the Spirit God which things also we speak what does also mean he spoke them first mm -hmm. he spoke these things and we also speak them it's we know the Spirit God we received the Holy Ghost the promise and now we also speak say the things, the things. that are freely given, freely given. We, also we also speak is that you is that your present reality yes. we have received not the spirit of the world the spirit which is of God that we might know the things which things we speak the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today we walk with him 
by speaking his words is this so difficult no. No. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible speaking also speaking the things is the basics of how we do things with God of how we walk with the Spirit God didn't we just read this I'm not making it up if we don't learn to speak them the things then we can never know them or have them or walk in them there seems to be a hidden manna that people are not walking in because it's hidden from them mm -hmm. revelation chapter 2 verse 17 he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches mm -hmm. to him that overcomes will i give to eat of the hidden manna mm -hmm. there seems to be a hidden manna. and what do you eat with you, your eye no. lower mm -hmm. you, you know your mouth you eat with your mouth you're tasting it the bible says taste and see that the lord is good what do you use to say the words of god your mouth yes there seems to be a hidden manna that a lot of people don't partake of don't eat from because they don't know it's there not everyone eats here Lamentations chapter 3 and then verse 37 who is he that saith and it comes to pass when the Lord commands it not now now hang on a second we have things that he's already said right yeah. we receive the spirit that we might know the things which things also we speak so we're not speaking things that he's not already commanded does that make sense yes so who is he that saith say that saith, that saith. Well, do you know what that means you know you know what saying things means it means you're saying things out your mouth these are the basics you got to get this straight yeah. You're not going to do this without saying things out your mouth. Well, I don't want to say things out my mouth. Well, then don't go here. Who is he that saith, and it comes to pass when the Lord commands it not? Out of the mouth, out of the mouth of the Most High proceeds not evil and good. He's not going to say, you prosper, and then say, doesn't look like you're prospering he says one thing and then he sticks with it James chapter 3 and verse 10 out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing we just read in Lamentations that the Most High doesn't do that my brethren these things ought not so to be don't do that you speak blessing and blessing only now I had a dream years ago and I'm not saying this was a dream from God although it's so applicable in many areas that you go well maybe that was but we used to live in a house the family house growing up had various roofs on it you know how houses are mm -hmm. and they were metal roofs mm -hmm. say metal roofs metal and every few years I would have to get up there or at least my dad would or I would have to and we would paint it so that it wouldn't rust mm -hmm. they might not have to do that these days with the newfangled metal roofs but we had to do that right yeah. you'd see it after several years it's begin to rust so you'd have to get up there and scrape it off Are you all right with this yeah. well one of the roofs was you know over over the a large portion of the house was very steep and pointed say very steep, very steep. and pointed and and we had a special ladder that had hooks on the end that we would climb up there precariously and floop it over the top of the point and it would hang down mm -hmm. and I would stand on the ladder and reach over as far as you could to paint this roof mm -hmm. and then you would scooch it over a little bit paint a little bit more right mm -hmm. so you can see why I might have a dream about this yeah. okay well then if you if you shuffled your way across that poor part of the roof that was very steep and pointed you could up above it there was more of a flat roof it wasn't perfectly flat but it had a very shallow angle to it mm -hmm. 
and that was the highest part where you could climb up there you know if you were in the right frame of mind and you get up there and but that also too had to be painted mm -hmm. and you got to make sure you didn't paint yourself into a corner because then where are you gonna go <laughs> there's only one way to go so I had this dream we had a family dog at the time a miniature schnauzer you know what those look like it's got the beard and the pointy ears tail wag like that name was shadow and so in my dream as you do I thought you know it'd be good to take my dog up there onto the high roof <laughs> <laughs> so I climbed up onto the pointy part you know and I got I got the dog to come up the ladder it's a dream relax <laughs> and the dog came up the ladder and got onto the the pointy narrow part that you would go shuffle across to get because I wanted to get up to the high part but this dog didn't listen all the time and rather than just you know scooching along come on scooch like I trained you to <laughs> didn't scooch but uh, you know got started going down the side and fell off the roof oh, but my point was the dog wouldn't listen the dog wouldn't didn't understand that it had to stay on the center part of that pointy roof otherwise it would fall off into the driveway or the lawn depending on which side you fell on if the dog didn't stay on the pointy part it would never get to the higher part can you see that but my intent was to take the dog up to the high part that was flat because you know then she could just kind of hang out up there it's a lot easier once you get there say once you get there, once you get there. it's a lot easier well the prosperity of God is an actual thing that you can get to that you can walk in but it is a narrow way mm -hmm. you don't go to the right to the left and the prosperity of God is not only a thing that God has it's part of his glory and it's a higher listen it's a higher level of glory that you may never get to if you don't listen to me the number one prosperity that we can behold God having is this that I've been reading about his ability to say things and they come to pass can you see how that might be a prosperity of God mm -hmm. his ability to say things and they come to pass how did this world get created God said things they came to pass how did gold get created Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 25 for I am the Lord I will speak and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass yeah. that's pretty prosperous if you ask me he's the Lord he will speak and the word that he shall speak shall come to pass that's the number one prosperity of God aren't you glad you know that that's where all other prosperity comes from that's where those prosperity scriptures came from if you can get this you can get anything those prosperity scriptures God spoke and what he spoke will come to pass you just have to get in agreement with it and stay there not speaking blessing and cursing which is where most people fall off the roof mm -hmm. like a yappy sad disobedient dog this is the number one established currency of heaven and earth speaking in agreement with God saying things and those things coming to pass are you here mm -hmm. you don't like it this way you should like it this way this opens everything up to you you're walking with the Holy Ghost he's God near today and you're learning say learning, learning how to speak his words and have his words come to pass they already have power in them mm -hmm. to produce the thing said you could call it a pearl of great price why because it would purchase all of the other pearls it will purchase righteousness saying the right things I have scripture it will purchase healing saying the right things it will purchase your youth 
being renewed saying the right things mm -hmm. it will take you from zero to rich saying the right things what are the right things agreement with God what he has already said mm -hmm. I know this grace he was made poor that I would be made rich this grace gets you kicked out of a lot of churches because they don't know it Matthew chapter 13 and verse 45 the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls what are the goodly ones the ones that are more valuable than the other ones yeah. and you might trade a few of the other ones to get to this one mm -hmm. verse 46 who when he had found one pearl say one pearl one pearl. one pearl of great price he went and sold all that he had and bought it you need to buy this buy it speaking the Word of God will produce all things freely given which things also we speak mm -hmm. buy it it's a pearl of great price I am therefore a merchant of the kingdom I believe in saying God's Word I buy it most people are not a merchant of the kingdom they're not even in the game and this is why they're not they're speaking blessing and cursing these things ought not so to be Malachi chapter 3 verse 13 your words have been stout against me saith the Lord yet you say what have we spoken so much against thee you have said that it is vain to serve God and what profit is it that we've kept this ordinance if they're saying what profit is this this doesn't profit me they were tithing what superseded the tithe what they said about it yeah. they said it wasn't profiting them people put their tithe in the butt in the basket and then they say this does no good blessing and cursing this ought not so to be say I'm blessed I'm, blessed. I'm super blessed you know the angels hear that and keep doing their thing your words are stout against me what would the opposite of stout against I know that's kind of a strange way we don't say that you are stout against <laughs> right sounds like something you know uh, Robin Hood would say <laughs> and his merry men what's the opposite of stout against if someone's stout against holy for I would say only for mm. if they were under a curse even though they were tithing because their words were against stout against the way to reverse that is to be only for say my words, my words are, only are only for, for. you want to go to the next level you want to go up on top of the flat roof where things are easy you want to go from zero to rich your words have to be only for not stout against mm -hmm. thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only serve him only shalt thou serve how are we serving him with our words are you here we worship him I worship you Holy Ghost and we speak in agreement with his words only Luke 4 verse 1 and this is right after Jesus was baptized by John in the River Jordan Holy Ghost came out of heaven and came upon Jesus did Jesus come out of heaven and rest on Jesus No. so the Holy Ghost a person came out of heaven and rested upon Jesus and was on Jesus until well he left right. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan 
and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness who is Jesus following now the Holy Ghost now he's following after the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is leading him verse 2 being 40 days tempted of the devil and and in those days did eat nothing and when they were ended he afterward a hungered and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of God command that this stone be made bread what do you suppose Jesus had to say I hope stay with me this is Jesus receiving the Holy Ghost right and he's following the Holy Ghost he's now walking with the Holy Ghost what does Jesus say verse 4 Jesus answered him and said it is written first thing out of Jesus's mouth it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God I believe Matthew says by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live mm -hmm. by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live by you saying it is written Jesus full of the Holy Ghost first time he starts to say something is it is written he goes on verse 8 and Jesus answered and said get thee behind me Satan for it is written mm -hmm. what's Jesus saying what has already been written mm -hmm. verse 12 Jesus answering and said it is said or it is written thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God mm -hmm. again Jesus saying what was already written how was Jesus walking with the Spirit Lord the Holy Ghost by saying what was written mm -hmm. verse 14 and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit mm -hmm. he got up to the next level didn't he because he didn't veer from one side to the other he stayed right in the middle and he said it is written it is written get thee behind me Satan it is written Does this make sense mm -hmm. and then he entered into the power of the Spirit which was another level is this so difficult verse 32 and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power how did Jesus's word get with power by speaking in agreement with the Holy Ghost listen by speaking in agreement with the Holy Ghost your word becomes with power why because there's already power in the Word of God it's already been released in the things that he said and when you agree with him those things become your things and you know the things of God which things also we speak it's how you walk with the Holy Ghost as God nears today it's how Jesus walked with him verse 37 and the fame of him went out into every place to the country roundabout if listen to me if you will get this you shall have fame who brings you fame walking with the Holy Ghost speaking in agreement with his word it's a higher level of glory one that most people don't get to but it's a place we're going but all of this is because of knowing the Spirit as Lord God in the earth today and speaking only his word it's a hidden manna that many will not partake of because they've rejected these things thinking that they were for only some other person and not them but the Spirit Lord says to you put my words in your mouth worship me make confession daily of those things which I've said concerning you and the power that's in those words shall lift you up and make you an example among men and many shall see and know and be aware that I am God in the earth today and that you are one that walks with me and so shall there be a lifting up from zero to greatness from not so great to supernatural and it shall come to pass in this day 
very quickly in Jesus name amen. amen if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost I worship you I commit to speaking your words only concerning my finances and my finances shall increase greater and greater until I have been made rich in Jesus name amen the father is in heaven Jesus at his right